Hi, and welcome to another Octoprint on Air episode, live on this, uh, well, more or less nice Friday afternoon. Um, it's sunny outside, though you can't see it because I engaged the, uh, the blast shields, because otherwise you would not be able to see anything, probably thanks to the glare. Speaking about glare, sorry for uh, about the situation uh, with my glasses. They are new and I only just noticed when I was setting up the stuff that uh, the, they do have a bit more of a reflection issue than my old pair. So yeah, I'll have to look into some kind of solution for this for further uh, future broadcasts. But for now, we'll have to deal with this, I fear. Um, I try to look like this, maybe. Um, yeah, so um, as usual, maybe a quick uh, uh, outline of what we are going to talk about today. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you what I've been up to the past couple of weeks since the last installment of these uh, episodes. Then I'll tell you what the last, uh, what the next steps will be for me. Uh, then we'll have a quick look at the uh, at the uh, anonymous usage tracking stats um, because they are still not uh, publicly available. Sorry for that. Too much other stuff to do. And then we'll have a very short Q and A segment. Uh, and uh, yeah, as always, if you are on desktop, there will be a live chat on, I think, this side. And if you are watching this on mobile, it will be down there. Of course, if you're watching the recording afterwards, there will not be a live chat. Sorry for that. I don't have a time machine. Um, I will keep an eye on that. As usual, uh, feel free to ask any kind of questions that come to your head while I'm talking. And then I will try to tackle them during the Q&A segment. Um, uh, also, in general, speaking about Q&A, this will be a bit on the short side, probably, because yeah, we only had two questions in a backlog. And once they are through, and if there is not that much stuff that has come up on the chat, then, well, we'll call it quits, I guess. OK, so what I've been up to, uh, those of you who are following me on Twitter and, uh, and or who watched the last installment of this uh, will know that I was um, on vacation the past three weeks or not the past three weeks i've been back already a couple of weeks but i was on vacation for three weeks right in the middle of that there was also the chaos communication camp which i intended um and i did a user meetup there on day two which was really nice around 16 people or so showed up and we talked about various things development challenges and uh, how all the people in attendance uh, use octoprint what kind of uses usage scenarios are there what kind of challenges um what yeah things they they wished were uh, were, were features stuff like that and uh, yeah i just want to say to anyone who watches this now who was there thank you really really uh, a lot for attending it was really great meeting you and uh, it really made yeah i it really made this this meetup a success i at first i was a bit afraid that there would only be like two or three people or something and then yeah we had this big sitting circle all of a sudden and that was really really nice yeah. Also, as a general note, uh, camp was an absolutely wonderful experience and I still want to just go back there. <laughs> but yeah, that's not an option. So I guess uh, I'll just have to um, wait out until uh, 36 C3 in December. So the Chaos Communication Congress, which I will hopefully attend then. So maybe if you are thinking about going and want to meet me, this might be a chance. Anyhow. Um, other than that, so before my, before my vacation, also after my vacation, I did more work towards 140, uh, primarily on the communication layer, which I still hope to be able to get into 140, the new one, the complete and utter rewrite of everything. And um, what I also worked on, and which you might have noticed the past two weeks, is um, getting 1312 ready for uh, a first and a second release candidate. So uh, 1312 RC1 was released. Um, last week and 1312 uh, RC2 was released this week and so far it's looking really good. There is uh, one minor issue, not, not not that minor, but I mean, there's a, there's a memory issue with the with the uh, G-Core viewer, which will require a third RC. But apart from that, I so far have not gotten back a ton of issues, actually only like two or three that made the RC2 necessary. And other than that, it seems to be a very, very stable version so far. So fingers crossed, uh, RC3 might be the last one. And then we can uh, go towards 1.3.12 stable and uh, check that 
off because it was it's, it's really really about time to push out a new stable release the last one was in april <laughs> but as i said back then i wanted to concentrate more on 140 and on moving the devil branch forward and uh, yeah that of course has the consequence of uh, decreasing the frequency of the maintenance releases as we now witness but at least it's for a good cause right all right so um now my notes won't scroll okay um what are the next steps so uh as I mentioned, I really want to get one for, uh, mentioned repeatedly in past installments. I really need to get 140 out this year because this is the release that will be Python 3 compatible. And as we remember, Python 2 will be end of life on January 1st, 2020. So in about three week, uh, three months and uh, 12 days or something. And yeah, I have to say this is stressing me out a bit, but uh, it needs to be done. And um, so I'm I'm working on this and and continuing continuing continuing. The goal is to to get a uh, release candidate out for this ASAP, which will then be released on the Devil RC branch, uh, not on the maintenance RC one, a uh, release channel. Sorry, not branch. Um, the thing is that yeah, I still have some open construction sites in the new com layer. It's printing and it's printing great and such, but there's still some leftovers with regards to feature uh, parity with the current com layer. And I also still have some UI things that I need to figure out how to solve, um, mainly an editor for connection profiles and such like that, because this is also a new feature that went in there. And um, yeah, I, I'll have to de decide on how to, yeah, on, 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 on uh, how to solve all that stuff. And, um, yeah, um, the option that I'm currently pondering is whether I should maybe think about releasing 140 without the new comb layer, which would be a real shame because it's almost ready, just not fully ready yet, but before I risk entering 2020 without a release that is uh, Python 3 compatible, I will rather skip the com layer for that release. And yeah, well, th this is a decision that I will have to make within the next month, I think. So it should still be doable to get an RC through uh, the usual um, uh, the, the usual RC phase if I decide this within the next uh, month, but uh, yeah, I'll have to see. I'm not sure yet. It, it all depends on, on, on how tricky some of the issues that I'm currently looking at will actually uh, end, out, uh, end up to be. I'm not entirely sure this was grammatically correct English, but I hope you still understood me. Um, and it certainly is not my preference to not have it in 140, but as I said, I really need to get out a release that is Python 3 compatible. And this is that, that has the utmost priority now. And um, yeah, so if push comes to shove, 140 will go uh, out without the new com layer. And instead that will then be something for 141 or maybe I'll just declare a 150 in that case uh, because it's a rather, rather new feature. And then we'll <laughs> get a, a a bit of an unusual release schedule in that case, but yeah, still. I mean, I'd, I'd rather not have it in there than try to rush it now because it's one of the most important features of the whole uh, package. And it would be a real shame if something, yeah, got left in there, which causes people too much trouble. And yeah, so this just on that. And the other thing, as I as I mentioned, we now have two release candidates out for 1.3.12. I really need to uh, get this stable release on the road. The idea currently is uh, uh, to uh, release 1.3.12 RC3 on Monday or on Tuesday, depending on uh, if anything gets um, if anything gets uh, reported over the weekend on the on the second uh, release candidate, then I might just might still have to fix that on Monday. But if nothing gets reported, I think I can uh, release the the third one on Monday. And um, yeah, that that will then hopefully also um, make the sorry. There's a bit of air uh, in, in places where it doesn't belong, <laughs> and that will also hopefully then um, yeah. Uh, close up that chapter for good. Yeah. Um, also something that will be part of my next steps uh, at the beginning of October, actually from October 8th, 
until the 11th, I think. I'll be in Berlin for the German inst uh, ins uh, instance. instance? Yeah, for the German version of the PyCon, so the Python conference, so PyCon.de. Um, and I also give a talk there about developing Octoprint on Friday uh, around noonish. Um, so if you should be visiting PyCon as well, then uh, yeah, you might want to attend that. I don't know. <laughs> it's your choice. Um, as far as I know, uh, they also record those talks, so the video should hopefully be available later. Um, speaking about videos, I don't know if you saw it, the video of my talk that I gave at 3D Meetup Sweden this earlier this year, back in end of April, uh, is now available on YouTube and I also linked to it from the YouTube channel, from Octoprint's YouTube channel. So if you wanted to see that talk but did not, uh, wasn't, weren't able to catch it in, in person at the event, then this is also now possible. Yep. Okay, so I think that was all of that for now. and. Then we can quickly look over at the stats. Just let me grab the right, I think it was this one that I wanted, no, rather that. Okay, so um, uh, I prepared the overview of the past 30 days for you here. Um, nothing really new to see here, to be honest, which is why I have some more interesting tabs over here. Um, Basically, what you're looking at here is uh, quite interesting. Is, is here the, the the adaptation of the of the two RCs for one uh, one three twelve. So RC one is the blue line, and um, the orange one is RC two. Uh, remember that this is logarithmic scale. So uh, no, we do not have half as many installations on the RCs as we have on <laughs> one three eleven stable. Uh, as you see, that's barely over. Yeah, barely around uh, three hundred or something. I don't know. Yeah, 300. And uh, and stable is more like 23,000 at any given time. Printed hours per version, also over here. Um, and uh, this has been a pretty steady, uh, um, a steady um, num ha have been some steady numbers the past couple of uh, months, actually. So we are constantly around 55,000 instances in, uh, seen in 30 days and always around 200 to 220 years that get printed in 30 days. So people seem to be quite uh, regular in that regard. Okay, um, another look over here. This is uh, only the numbers for 1312RC anything. So anything that starts with 1312RC is here. So we can see the RC. Testers are mostly in uh, in Europe and in the U.S. with some in in, in South America, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, some in South America as well, in Africa, in Oceania, I think also in yeah, also in New Zealand. So hi, and Japan and all that. So um, uh, roughly mirrors actual the general distribution. <laughs> um, and uh, we can also see the here here I released uh, the second RC and people started upgrading, but apparently some more people are installing the RC2 than are upgrading from it because this curve rises faster than that one. Anyhow, um, this is actually something that really helps me, um, yeah, staying calm during the RC phase, so to speak, because, well, I now see that we already have uh, 4.5 4 thousand printed hours on RC1 and uh, over a thousand already on RC2, and that will probably rise even more during the weekend, because as we saw here, the weekends are usually the ones with the most prints uh, running, or with the heaviest printing running, which kind of makes sense, I guess. And uh, 416 people who, who took a look at, or instances that ran, uh, run, ran uh, RC1 over the last seven days, which is a bit longer, uh, which is a bit shorter than RC1 was out, so I would probably need to adjust this period, but anyhow. And RC2 already 245, so yeah, this is a huge relief to see these numbers and see them constantly go up and people updating and all that, and that's really nice, so hooray. People are using the RCs, I'm really happy because the feedback tickets are very, very empty still, <laughs> as usual. But yeah, this is why I, I actually, why I added the tracking and this is such a relief now. Um, something that I added in uh, 1.3.12 um, is um, that Octoprint will now also 
tell the tracking server which plugins you have installed. So before this was not possible due to how the whole tracking was set up, but I adjusted this slightly. And so now starting with 1.3.12, we have a bit more realistic information about what plugins actually get used than what we had before. Because before I only could track the new plugin installs as they happened, but now I also see what is already installed. And um, I can, of course, only if you opt in for that, the usual. Um, uh, as you can see here, uh, the most uh, the most uh, popular plugins so far for the people running RCs, which of course is only a part of the general population, are the firmware updater, the bad level visualizer, print time genius, display layer progress, navbar temp, and such. So yeah, there are quite a number of plugins actually, various plugins and also in various versions. Um, what I found interesting is the long tail here compressed upload, big box firmware, things that I'd never heard before, Delta Cal, debug flags, don't f with my port, also interesting. Um, yeah, so apparently there are uh, way, way more uh, plugins out there than I so far knew about. And uh, this is also now giving me a neat uh, insight into that. Um, yeah. Anyhow, so this is something that I wanted to quickly show you. And uh, the goal is also in the future, as, as soon as I get around to making this data public, blah, blah, you know, the usual um, with everything else that is currently going on, that might be a while still, sorry for that, but I think development takes precedent. Um, but yeah, the, the long-term goal is to somehow get this out here and on the plugin repository in some way so that people can see which plugins are popular and have a huge user base and also therefore maybe a bit of support uh, uh, available in the community and all that. And I need to mute something here, I think. I can't mute it. I can't mute it. Perfect. Um, yeah, so that was that. Um, and uh, yeah, perfect. Um, Right, so um, that brings me actually already to the Q&A sec section. I think so far there are no questions in the, nope, no questions so far in the live chat. So we just jump in and then take a look later um, if, there, if something has changed in that regard. So the first question now <laughs> by Gaston was the new sidebar webcam plugin allows to see what's happening on the print bed at all times and can be maximized too. Is there a way to disable the control tab webcam view while keeping the sidebar enabled? Um, so uh, yes, <laughs> but it's a bit of work. So the thing is that is something that the, the, the sidebar plugin could uh, do for you. Uh, otherwise you might, might be able to do it with a different plugin that does this, but yeah. Um, First of all, in principle, it's built into Octoprint that one plugin can replace certain existing uh, or um, tabs or sidebar panels or, or just disable them if it's enabled. The problem that we have here is that this mechanism can't be used because um, we do not want to disable the whole control tab, but only the webcam part within the control tab. So this is where things get a bit tricky. So um, what the plugin could do here is use some kind of JavaScript on page load to um, yeah to 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 simply remove the the element in question. So if it if if the plugin in the, the sidebar plugin is enabled, then it could just check well um, is the webcam tab uh, is the sorry is, in, is is the is the webcam on the control tab ap active and if so, this remove remove the node. Um, then, uh, yeah, I, I think it should not cause any kind of errors. Uh, so this is something that could be done. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if this is something that the author of the plugin would be interested in adding, but it might be worth it to just maybe open a pull request, uh, not sorry, a feature request on the repository and ask them. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that should be doable. I think there's just not a dedicated mechanism in place for it yet. Uh, and also uh, probably not going to be added because that's a very specific question, I think. Just, yeah. And that was already that question. Um, 
Next question by Christian, paraphrased, can you use the same SD card image in a Pi 4 as in a Pi 3? In theory, yes, uh, but it has to be uh, one of the current Octopi nightlies. Uh, the thing is that the current stable Octopi image, uh, version 1.16, uh, yeah, that, that isn't yet compatible to the Pi 4 because it actually came out before the Pi 4 was released. So the, the included kernel and the included firmware and all of that stuff, they simply do not know to what to do with the Pi 4 and so the, the whole SD image simply refuses to boot um, with this funny little rainbow uh, screen thing that you might have seen uh, in the past. Um, the current light that you built for Octopi 017 however should work and as far as I know and also I tried it myself they do. Um, we also have a link up of that on the forum in the Raspberry Pi 4 thread. Um, I cannot tell you uh, about any kind of possible timeline about releasing uh, one of these nightlies as a new stable image. I am not sure if, uh, yeah, if this is currently uh, planned by Guy or not. Um, but uh, in any case, personally, I also still think that the Pi 4 is a tad oversized for octoprint and literally too hot like yeah i i still think that if you need an active cooling fan in order for the thing to not be able to boil eggs on it it is well maybe a bit too hot um <laughs> sorry i just had to laugh at a question in the live chat um yeah so um for now, I would actually just recommend to everyone who wants to jump in and get on the Octoprint bandwagon to buy a Pi 3 because, yeah, it, the, the Pi 4 does not give you any more performance, any more measurable performance. And it, on top of things, you will have to invest into active cooling for it if you don't want it to die in, I don't know how short a time frame. So, or actually maybe rather risk it dying in a short uh, time frame. So yeah, I I would just say stick to a Pi 3 for now and whenever Octopi 017 will land, it will land, but my recommendation will still be to buy a Pi 3 instead and I will also reflect that on the download page actually for, for, the, for the foreseeable future because yeah, it's just, we do not need two HDMI ports and uh, a very hot CPU and all that stuff. The Pi 3 works great or the Pi 3 Plus if you want. All right, um, now back to me. A uh, question from the chat by Powerwiesel. Um, are you planning to support resin printers? And I had to laugh because I bought a resin printer about uh, two months ago, <laughs> an Anycubic Photon. And I was actually afraid to uh, go public with this uh, acquisition because I, I, I already pictured people um, bombarding me from left and right with, hey, when will, will Octoprint support this printer? So my current plans are do not include resin printers. I have my hands full enough with uh, with the uh, absolute chaos and mayhem that FDM printers are, or rather their firmwares. Um, so yeah, this is not an not an immediate goal. I mean, what I'm planning on long term is to make. Octoprint even more modular with regards to the kind of device class that it supports. So FDM printer being one of them, maybe laser cutter or uh, um, CNC being another one. Um, but really long term, right? I mean, I'm jo only creating a bit of the, 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 the fundament for that right now in the new com layer with regards to how I model some things. But that's more like I didn't want to paint myself into a corner kind of thinking and less uh, I need to do this within the next two years or something kind of thinking. Um, if while doing this, it suddenly becomes possible to also use Octoprint with resin printers by pure chance or rather by someone who writes the plugin that utilizes the new functionality, then well, why not? But um, yeah, the, the focus for now will continue to be uh, FDM printers with open non-proprietary um, serial or Possibly this is something that I actually do want to support and already do support with the with the new com layer. Uh, possibly socket, uh, a TCP socket-based uh, interfaces. Um, 
and as much fun as resin printers are as far as i have seen so far the, the whole remote control situation with them or rather the whole interfacing with them situation is even worse than with uh, with fdm because yeah everything is more or less proprietary and you have to reverse engineer it and every single printer seems to, seems to do it differently unless you have clones of clones of clones uh, which yeah apparently the anycubic photon is of something called a, or, or rather yeah something to do with a g2 mainboard or something like that i'm i i have my photon in order to print dungeons and dragons miniatures <laughs> and in order to figure out how all this stuff even works uh in case it becomes more mainstream in the future but for right now it's not something that i want to develop against so yeah that was that question um i'm currently not seeing uh, any more specific questions o only a, only a comment from jim that he's concerned about the python 3 support with all his plugins it's been going through them as time permits. Yeah, um, the plugins are also something that worries me a, a great bit with Python 3. I mean, right now my focus is mostly on um, getting Octoprint in a shape or rather getting a version of Octoprint out that supports Python 3 officially so that no one can come at me like, uh, but it doesn't support the current one and the other one is outdated and not no longer works and blah. I mean, it will continue to work and it will probably continue to work for a long time to come because you can't force people to update. So I'll have to run um, at least for a year uh, with with Python 2 and 3 supported in the core base, which is the code base, which is going to be not a lot of fun because it will double testing effort. But yeah, hooray. Um, this way, at least I can exit a bit, bit uh, earlier than if I had jumped on the Python 3 bandwagon a, a year or two ago, because then I would have had to support it a bit longer. Now I at least have the argument, well, it's end of life, but yeah, so, um, so this is the current goal. And I hope that, um, as soon as the first per people run, start running Octoprint against Python 3 regularly, and I will probably see if I can just set up my um, uh, my my own test printers here with, with the Python 3 build instead in order to be able to fully um, in order to fully test everything uh, yeah that that then also plug in authors who who so far yeah weren't even aware of that will react and I also still something that I, I really want to do is put push out a blog post about all all this uh, for plug in authors mainly in order to tell them what to do and also for users who get scared by the messages that Pip is throwing at them but um, yeah um, it's on the to do list I hope to get around to it soon before it is no longer helpful <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, another question by Jim. Uh, is there a way to globally enable all plugins under Python 3 in lieu of the flag necessary for the plugin manager to see them? That's a good question. I think no. Um, I think you currently it will currently only load those plugins and only see those plugins that have this flag. Uh, however, let me quickly check the source. <laughs> Oh dear, um, the source is currently in a bit of a three column layout thing, which makes seeing anything a bit tricky because I was busy uh, writing a migration. Um, but I think it was that way. But last, just let me check because I might have added a command line switch there. If not, this is something that I actually should do maybe because um, it would probably make testing way easier uh, for people with a ton of plugins like you. Um, uh, dun dun dun, find plugins from folders, find plugins from entry points, import from module, plug dun 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 dun, get Python version, is plugin incompatible? Plugin bundled, compatible, compatibility ignored list. Ah, that might maybe work. Um, I added a list of plugin identifiers that you can configure, uh, which will get the plugin 
uh, compatibility check always is uh, ignored, so it will always result in true. Um, question is only how did I actually set it up? Uh, what? This is not helpful. Uh, give me a, give me a second. Ah, here. Okay. Um, compatibility ignored list. Mm, da -dum -dum -dum. And that gets supplied to the plugin manager. Holy cow. Um, and we init it here. And we get the data from there. Yeah. So in the settings, you can... Uh, let me maybe drag this over. Does this work? Can we work like that? Uh, nope. This is the one that I wanted. Okay, so um, if you define a, a settings key, something like uh, yeah, also in in the in the settings, something like plugins and then uh, forced compatible, and then you add all your all your plugins like this, then it should ignore them, uh, or rather should ignore the compatibility information. Um, and uh, yeah, so apparently I, it did add that. Maybe I could, I can also look into adding a flag for that, but if this, uh, the, the alternative approach already works, that would of course save me some work right now, or maybe just send me a pull request to, to add a flag there. Um, that would also be an option for, uh, for the devil branch, of course, because uh, yeah, this is only in the devil branch and now I can't find the chat anymore. Great. There it is. Okay, perfect. Um, back to me. So, yeah. So I hope this answers the question. So there is an option. Apparently, I was I had enough foresight to implement it. I I'm full of surprises. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe something like a development flag would also be nice there. Um, so I don't know. If someone wants to tackle that, send me a PR against the devil branch. Okay. So, um. That was that. We don't have any more Q&A thingies. Nothing in the live chat, I think, right now. Yeah, that's a good question. It, uh, so yeah, I, I mentioned earlier when the when I was starting the when I was starting the recording that that would probably be the the moment when uh, the delivery guy would ring in order to bring me uh, my copy of the new Link's Awakening. Uh, so far he hasn't rung, or she, I don't know, but usually it's a he. Um, and I'm now wondering where my copy is. Maybe they put it into the mailbox. It should probably fit. That might actually be the case. Woohoo! That actually seems to be the case. So, uh, my weekend is rescued, uh, saved or whatever. Um, uh, and uh, actually without uh, us getting an interruption here by the mailman. That's uh, the perfect outcome, actually. Okay, so um, with that being said, uh, we don't have any more questions, I think. And there is a new game, or rather an old game, that I really, really love and is one of my favorite games in my mailbox that needs to get played. So I think we're going to wrap this up here. Uh, the next one uh, is... Uh, yeah, the next broadcast I'll probably I, I'll try to schedule within roughly a month again. Uh, sorry for the delay in the uh, uh, with this one. It did not really make sense for me to make uh, do one right after my vacation, basically. So yeah, I haven't done anything because I was gone, and I'm currently trying to catch up with my mail. So uh, this is all that I can tell you right now. So I figured let's wait for uh, a couple more weeks, two, three, almost three actually, and. Um, uh, yeah, uh, get some stuff to talk about, uh, or rather uh, experience some st some things to talk about again. Yeah, um, yeah. I will post the appointment on Patreon as always. Also, see that I put the recording of this one up uh, uh, next week as, as as early as possible. And uh, until then, uh, thanks for being here. I hope it was interesting. And uh, until next time, I guess all that's left to say is happy printing. Bye.